Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So let's start. We are going to start a new topic now. Now we will be talking about the Keynesians, new Keynesians, uh, salt water. So salt water school of economic thought became uh, quite a popular stream, uh, school of economic thought and it is still exists. And you have a lot of uh, developments taking place. So salt water school of economic thought believes that you have a, a role of the government and um, the government intervention becomes important. So it is attached with the New Keynesian School of Economics. So here we are going to talk about the the sticky price model. So sticky prices, which means that when you have a rigid. So so far what we have discussed is whether it is real business cycle or the Keynesian coordination failure model. In both cases, we did not focus more on the rigidity part or a sticky part. So the prices and wages were flexible. So we were just is superimposing the condition that when you have the rate of interest higher, how the labor market is going to react. So that's what we had the output supply curve uh, and then we also had the output demand curve and then we also superimpose the condition that if you have a increase in rate of interest then, then whether the labor will go for current or future, so what will be the substitution effect scenario. Here we will be trying to look at the the stickiness that we talk about in macroeconomic context, when we have a, a context, when we have the uh, the the scenarios uh, where in we are so in real life, uh, when we say about flexible wages and prices, it may not be easily acceptable because in most of the situations, what we see that the short run adjustment is difficult. In long run, adjustment is easier. So maybe in the long run, when you think that when you are going to old, then you will have a different lifestyle. But in the very short run period, maybe a less than a year or so, it will be difficult to change your behavior in a big way. In the same way, when you look at the macroeconomic variable, then it becomes really difficult to understand that how things are changing at a much larger scale. So we are trying to understand the sticky prices in that direction. So the reference book remains same, we are talking about the Stephen Williamson and we are uh, trying to understand the new Keynesian model with the sticky prices. How in the Keynesian coordination failure model, we understood that money is not neutral, but we will be also saying that in more formal way, we are introducing the Keynesian idea of stickiness in the short run and then we will see that how new Keynesian idea will try to further substantiate that argument that we have we had in the previous session. So, uh, show how government policy both monetary and fiscal policy works in the new Keynesian sticky price model. So, there it becomes really crucial that how new, new Keynesian model uh, uh, helps understand the stickiness. Uh, and how we can think about the interaction of monetary and fiscal policy under the stick price model. Show the implications of new Keynesian model for what we should see in the data and the optimal monetary policy. So maybe here we will be looking at the, the Taylor rule and further uh, uh, the dynamics that are useful in uh, understanding the monetary policy making. So the art of monetary policy making, what it involves, we will be talking about that. Construct a liquidity trap in the new Keynesian model. So in which also in the, if you remember monetary intertemporal model, we talked about the zero lower bound where we had the, when we say that the money supply and the bond that you have, if both are equal, then we have the the liquidity trap situations we will be talking about and how negative interest rate policy works in which all directions. And then we will be at last highlighting the limitations of the new Keynesian model. So this is our what we are trying to understand. Now let us first understand what do we mean by the sticky price model. 
when i am saying about the sticky price model that it, then it involves two things first thing is that how individuals perceive about future that if i am standing today here how i am thinking about after one week 10 days or 15 days or 20 days now the second aspect is that when i am talking about the exp expectation then i will also think about that what will be the cost of that expectation so if if i am the shopkeeper and if i am selling some goods right and i know that price of this good is going to be higher in future so this is my expectation but the cost would be that if i am going to increase this price then if all others are not increasing the price then i may be the loser that the customer that who are coming to buy goods from me they may go to those uh, sellers who are not increasing the price so if you are expecting certain thing in future it also has some amount of uh, cost involved and those cost involved are having the main attention of new keynesian school of economic thought that how when when you have a price change in the price change happening in the economy in the short run it does not lead to immediate change in everything so so this is what they they try that if you have a they try to make they if if for example they have a if if you see that inflation is going to be higher then you will not find that everyone is increasing the price immediately maybe the price of raw material has gone up but the final product output may not be going that higher uh, you can see the best example is that most of the car companies are facing the problem of semiconductor shortage and as a result what is uh, what has happened that uh, in some or the other way and since the metal prices are also going up post covid 19 so the companies are trying to cope up with the existing prices they are not increasing the price immediately some firms have gone for margin increase they are trying to pass the cost in a gradual manner they are not passing those costs immediately to everyone so that becomes a important scenario to understand the typical example the very conventional example that the keynesian school of economic thought always cites is about the menu cost so what is the menu cost so menu cost is that when you are if you are owning a restaurant and if you are running in a very downtown street then there it may happen that if the cost of input is is going up then whatever the ingredients you are using uh, to have a, to to serve to the customer or to to or to prepare good food to serve to the customers if the input prices are going up you wait for some point you wait for some time you you do not pass that increase price immediately to customers because it is assumed that if you are going to change the price of the menu quickly then you also incur some extra cost what is those extra cost extra cost is that you will you will have to go for printing you will have to go for thinking about how much i have to increase so if you are going to increase the, uh, the uh, if you are going to see the increase in printing cost right so if you are having extra cost attached if the printing of your menu then this will also create a extra burden so if the prices are changing quite frequently in the short run it will not lead to change in price of most of the items it will have some kind of stickiness rigidity in prices in the same way when we talk about wages so classicals argued that the wages and prices are flexible and and the real business cycle model and even the keynesian perspective they added with the help of i would say neo classicals what was the idea idea was that how we can understand the business cycle dynamics with flexible wages and prices with the role of expectation here in this situation it it happens that if there is a role of expectation right if the if if you have a individuals or if if you have a firms uh, looking for some amount of i would say the or or if if you have individuals talking about or i would say some forms in the economy talking about the the price rise then you will find that they will not be following the price rise trend immediately it, they will wait for some time because there are not just the menu cost printing cost but there are also other concerns that if all are not increasing the prices then you will 
always have the the risk of losing your business so in the very short term you will find that the prices do not change and in the same way that i mentioned about the wages so i was highlighting the wages the way we are describing the prices of goods and services we it is also directly applicable so in case of classical what we saw that prices and wages were flexible in case of keynesian the wages are also sticky in the same in the sense that the contract the the kind of uh, formal agreement happens between the employer and employee it sometime uh, in the short run it may not be as flexible as emphasized by the classical it may take some time so those kind of uh, those angles are added to the new keynesian school of economic thought the second argument that the or second proposition that the new classical have is the monetary policy as a fixed target for the interest rate right supported by setting the money supply appropriately which means that when you have money supply increase as they argue that money is, uh, money is not neutral in the case of Ke new keynesian school of economic thought so when money supply is increasing then this is having positive impact on rest of the macroeconomic variables and there will be certain role expectational role of the of certain macroeconomic variable certain agents in deciding about the the role of monetary policy in the economy so there you have a and here they also decide about the threshold that if you have the optimal level of supply in the economy right if you have a, if you have no output gap if you do not see any kind of deviation from natural rate of interest then everything will go as usual but they bring one intervention here about the wage rigidity so once you have the wage rigidity playing a very, very important role then the understanding of money supply becomes in, interesting in the sticky price model here you have a uh, employment determined as the quantity of labor required to produce the quantity of output demanded at the fixed price of the goods so this is very uh, common that we find in most of the cases now the new keynesian model here in this case it becomes really important let's look at the chart b which is crucial now here in most of the cases we are seeing that this is the output production function this is the output y star is the output n star is the labor here you have the money supply here you have the pl y star r star right so this is how you have at this price here you have the p star and this is the money supply and this is the demand for money and r star is the same that we have the fisherian uh, demand for money that we derived right now here demand and supply but at this wage rate here you have the labor supply this much now b is crucial here we are seeing that rm and ym is the equilibrium level of rate of interest and the output so this is the equilibrium level of rate of interest and output here you have to make sure that what we are seeing is that r star is linked with y star and linked with y1 also right so if r star is the 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 equilibrium let's first deal with r star and y1 firms would like to supply suppose y1 output it is willing to supply and it is desired to supply y1 output but it is supplying only y star so this gap that you have y star minus ym or i would say uh, so this is the scenario that you have that this is the equilibrium output right and equilibrium rate of interest and this is also called as the natural rate of interest at which you have the equilibrium output right the actual supply actual output supply the firm wants to supply this much but because of this wage rigidity that you have because of labor supply firm with the given rate of interest it is supplying only this y star which means that ym minus y star uh, becomes some kind of output gap scenario or or i would say ym minus y1 becomes the output gap scenario so these two are the important aspect to look at 
So, here what it means that the deviation from y m either to y 1 or y star it creates some kind of scenarios under which we are not uh, at equilibrium right. So, if any deviation from equilibrium this creates the output gap, gap kind of scenario. So, in case of new Keynesian model this is what it implies that given the output demand which is nothing but the IS curve that you have already dealt in most of your basic macroeconomic textbook. This IF curve which is the demand it shows that here you have the output of R star and Y star. The this is the, the willingness to supply which means that it is talking about capacity this is the actual but you are supplying only Y star and this is primarily attributed due to this Y star and N star. So, in the short run this is how the Keynesian function looks like and Keynesian model looks like because in Keynesian model if you have a if you have a this output gap created and this creates the problem. So, output gap that you have it is the difference between equilibrium output if prices were flexible then the actual output. So, actual output is this this is the equilibrium output. So, y m minus y star is nothing but the output gap and this is where we have the role of lot of policy that what we can do so that we can reach at y m at least if not y 1 we can at least come to this point right. We can come down and we can reach to r m minus y m. So, this is how it looks like. The natural rate of interest that we have it is r m it is the equilibrium rate of interest if prices were flexible, but since prices are not flexible. So, this is how we are seeing and this price is not flexible it is also linked with the W star and N star. So, this is how it implies rest of the things are very simple to understand not much to deal with. Let us understand that <coughs> what what happens when we have the money supply decrease. So, when we have a when we talk about the the Keynesian idea. So, Keynesian idea is always talking about uh, some kind of some kind of process through which we try to understand the behavior of most of the macro variables that how the macro variables are reacting in the context of mostly the short run. And here what we uh, are trying to understand is that if you have a if you have a more number of variables so whatever we have understood in the last session about consumption about investment about real wage about the the employment whether those variables are also pro cyclical in this case. So, in case of new Keynesian this is where we are talking about a decrease in the central bank's interest rate target in the new Keynesian model. So, here what we have is that here we have the labor supply right once we have the labor supply. So, this is the initial condition. So, here we have W 1 and here we have N 1. What we are saying is that this is the equilibrium point R 1 right and this is the r 1 y 1. This is the scenario. So, this is p 1. So, in order to make sure some when money supply increases the role of the central bank is to maintain the price stability. So, it tries to maintain right. So, whatever adjustment it makes. So, it is p uh, fixed. So, prices are sticky not changing though there is a change in the money demand, but this is not uh, this is whatever you have the increased money supply. This is also adjusted with the money demand. So, it is almost same. So, price does not change. Here we have N 1 Y 1 right. So, here what we are saying that when we have increase in money supply right this might be a scenario in which the gum uh, the central bank wants to maintain and the uh, the inflationary scenario in the uh, in, in the country or maybe the better outlook with the increase in money supply this we have. So, this I explained with both the scenario, but let us deal with the superimposition scenario. When M 1 M S 1 and M S 2 if M S 1 is shifting to M S 2 this is leading to increase in money supply which means that the rate of interest is going to be lower. So, this rate of interest is going to be lower once we have the rate of interest going to be lower what typically happens that investment is going to shoot up when, when investment is going to shoot up then you have a more of output increasing right. So, this y 2 so output shift to y 2 right and here it touches to this point 
right here we have uh, earlier it was y1 but because of the rate of interest decrease here you have a y2 now this y2 corresponds to the point at which here we are seeing that there is an increase in output and increase in employment here we have n1 and m2 n1 denotes the labor let's not get confused m1 is the money supply y1 y2 are the outputs and r1 r2 are the rate of interest so now this particular uh, chart is very crucial with this rate of interest getting lower the individuals will be tempted to work for more and as a result what we see is that here you have the supply of labor increasing right and what typically it happens that in this situation when you have the r2 rate of interest lower here individuals are so the wage rate is going up and when we have the wage rate going up we see increase in employment so which means that this when i am linking r2 with yt due to increase in money supply this is leading to increase in output and this increase in output is augmented with investment so investment is getting higher if investment is getting higher then it is obvious that firm would like to hire more labor right and labor when they are seeing that rate of interest is going to be lower then it is better that they will be focusing more on the employment side and here we have a both having interaction so this is where we are seeing that here we have ns now when i am having the rate of in, uh, rate of interest scenarios linked with the labor supply so the wage rate is going up the employment is increasing so from the business cycle perspective what it what typically happens is that price stickiness that we have it remains same the increase in money supply leads to lower rate of interest increases output increases employment and this also increases the wage rate right so if you have a so if you have the the interest target of the central bank moving more in this favor then this automatically short out uh, short out the issue of employment it also short out the issue of investment it also short out the issue of output gap so output gap that we normally call calculate so let's spend some time on the output gap that what we how we are dealing with so if you are having suppose you have the gdp series so here you have the gdp series in gdp series you have two components one it is called the trend so you have will have the suppose india gdp is 1 lakh 40 uh, thousand crores so if india gdp is 1 lakh 40 thousand crores then here you have this much output right if this output if i am have if i have to calculate the output gap how will i be calculating any data series will have two components trend and cycle now if you are uh, if you want to calculate the output gap then you can simply subtract the from the actual gdp you can simply subtract the trend whatever value that you are going to get that is cyclical value that we have that we call it in practical sense that value we use it for output gap as we substitute for output gap in most of the situations what we have is that when you have the output gap playing very important role then when we have the the negative it means that your trend component which was supposed to increase it is lower than the uh, than the or it is higher than the actual so here the trend is is higher than the actual then it is negative right when you have a positive which means the actual output is higher than the trend right so there you have the the positive output gap if you plot this then you will see the cyclical trend that where the output was fluctuating so in in macroeconomics if you want to do any kind of project or any kind of assignment then these variables are very useful to calculate so you can see the impact of the output gap on interest rate on exchange rate and how the exchange rate reacts with the output gap so this basically shows the demand supply and uh, demand scenario that how much you have and it also it is linked with the with the capacity in the economy so supply also reflects that how much you can produce 
and how much it is actually demanded. So, that is what you have. So, your actual output how much you can produce and the equilibrium output. So, this is how it is dealing here. So, I hope this particular understanding has made us understand the model in a much better way. So, a decrease in central bank interest rate. Now, what, what it says the non neutrality of money that we are talking about. So, non neutrality of money in the new Keynesian setup what it says it says about a reduction in the central bank's interest rate target supported by an increase in money supply acts to increase aggregate output employment this is what aggregate output is increasing aggregate output increasing employment is increasing employment is increasing wage rate is going up. So, this is what I try to mention here. The demand for output rises at a fixed price of goods and firms accommodate increase in demand by hiring more labor. This is what we have. So, here if you have a demand for output, so once we have the demand for output how it will be coming when the rate of interest is lower it becomes more attractive to buy more goods and services. So, there we have consumption, investment, real wage all increase. So, if you have a such type of scenario your investment is going to be higher and consumption will also be higher. So, this is where we are talking about. Private markets cannot work efficiently on their own, prices do not move quickly enough to clear all markets. So, this is the short run scenario. Fiscal and monetary policy decisions can be made quickly enough, policy actions work quickly which means that it can be thinking about. So, if you want to understand the efficiency part you can bring in. So, this is what we have tried to understand. This also mentions about the efficiency part. What happens when we have the rate of interest decrease which means that money supply is increasing. So, this brings efficiency to the system because most of the macro variables are increasing and if most of the macro variables are increasing then this is going to have positive impact on some of the uh, positive impact on the aggregate economic output and once you have aggregate economic output increasing. So, your overall economy will go up. So, that is the underlying idea we have here. So, here we are trying to say I will be covering the next uh, part from here and then we can we will have discussion on non neutrality of money further and we can think about how we can make this particular uh, the new Keynesian understanding better. I hope uh, with this particular uh, background you are at least aware about what is the meaning of stickiness, how stickiness plays a very important role. And later sections we will have the more formal introduction of stickiness with certain uh, monetary policy rules, stabilization rules of fiscal policy and even the taxation rules. Uh, those rules are important to understand especially from the macroeconomic dim dimension perspective. I am stopping it here and thank you, thank you so much.